Okay, you two, I want to talk about a topic that comes up a lot, and it's how much do I need to eat to actually gain muscle? So this is a, this question will never die. Like it's always (laughs) going to be there. Right. Uh, And, you know, there's several answers that could come out. I think the first answer that comes up is, well, it depends, but I want to talk about the depends, the, 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 the depends question and how you answer this for specific people. So I'm going to pose the question again. How much do I got to eat to gain muscle? <laughs> a lot. Yes. You got to be in a surplus. That's for sure. So first off, starting off, like, again, if you're going to try to gain weight or gain muscle mass, a surplus should be top of top of mind all the time. Surplus meaning intaking more calories than are going out in energy expenditure, both through exercise, both through non, non-exercise activity, just the activity you go throughout the, out the day. And there's a few other things that we could probably factor in there, but we start to get down to kind of splitting hairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you could talk about that, Taylor. Yeah. So there's like one of two ways that you could go about it. Um, You could just, you know, put yourself in a general surplus. um, And, you know, as long as you're doing the proper training and, you know, uh, just stimulating hypertrophy, you're going to see an increase in muscle mass. Um, However, there's going to be less control with the increase in fat mass. If you're just in general surplus, you just, you know that you're eating higher than your maintenance, you're eating more than you're burning. Uh, And the other way to go about it is to just also figure out what your maintenance is, you know, how much lean muscle mass do you have? And that's when you can get really specific and kind of have a little more control over, you know, gaining more muscle than fat. And there's always going to be a little bit of fat mass that's gained in a surplus. Um, But there are ways, right? Like I said, in that second way, there are ways to gain that muscle mass with minimal fat gain. Let's talk about this because uh, like people are going, OK, I'm in like, I'm hooked. like I, I heard what you said there, but like, how do I gain muscle without getting fat? Right. <laughs> so what I heard you say was, is like you're going to ha- put on body fat. In fact, your body is going to be in a better position to put on muscle if it is carrying uh, additional body fat. And again, mm-hmm. like uh, body fat or how much is too much is relative <laughs> to the athlete For or sure. the participant in the program. Yes. But I, what I hear you saying is like, you gotta, you gotta get your head around this. Yeah. Like you're not going to be ultra lean, right. And gain a bunch and get max gains from your program. Right. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's a mindset thing, you know, part, part of it. It's also the next, but part of that also is, is understanding how that helps you put on more mass, right. Or how mm-hmm. it help, help, helps you put on more lean muscle mass when you are putting on maybe a little extra fat mass. So maybe from like a, from the programming perspective, exercise programming perspective, Jeff, maybe just what are you, what are the benefits of having a little extra fat on you? when you're going through your kind of your gaining phase? Well, you know, a lot of people, when they're bulking, they start going to like a strength phase, right? One to five. And when you're having more mass, you're able to lift more weight, right? You're heavier. So yeah, mass moves mass. Exactly, right. Right, Right. so you're able to move a little heavier. You're able to create more, you know, motor units. And then a lot of these bodybuilders are coming from that and then back to their hypertrophy state, right? So they're able to stimulate more muscle growth that way uh, because they just came through you know, a strength phase mm-hmm. where they're creating more motor units, more connection to the muscle, uh, building bigger muscles. And then they're coming through and coming through a hypertrophy phase. Right. Um, it's a pretty standard process um, in bodybuilding. Right. So that's the thing. So like everybody's kind of looked to bodybuilding, which is like the big mass gaining yeah. uh, population out there. I mean, the goal is, is always more is better, right? More muscle, more muscle, more muscle. But now we're applying this to your, average everyday person who needs and wants to gain a little bit more muscle mass. I'm going to turn this back over to you, Taylor, with regard to that's what the typical bodybuilder, successful bodybuilder in terms of building muscle mass is going to be doing. He just mentioned it's kind of their cycles. There's phases that you're going through with regard to your nutrition, with regard to your, your, your exercise programming, your lifting programming, the intensities that you use, the volumes that you use. How does this apply to the, 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 the person that just wants to, feel a little better about themselves and look a little bit better in their, in their bathing suits as we start to look at kind of more specific to the nutrition piece. 
um, like what you're like what you're saying when it comes to like the exercise. So they're not really doing something nearly as calculated yeah. as what as what Jeff's talking. Yeah. About. Yeah. Well, so, you know, that's kind of where like a surplus is a surplus. You know, it's like there you need the extra calories if you're going to gain any sort of mass on top of the stimulation. So even if you are just kind of like average Joe off the street and you're coming in and, you know, you're doing our classes three to four times a week, that's still going to provide stimulation to gain mass. It may not be as calculated as like, you know, bodybuilders and everything like that in that world. Um, but you're still going to achieve that goal. Um, and then, like you said, the mindset of like, okay, there is going to be a little bit of fat that comes with it. Um, but you know, focusing on your performance and just focusing on that increase of in muscle mass kind of helps with the mindset. Uh, you can always cut later. You can always do that deficit later. Um, but so long as, you know, you're gaining more muscle than you're gaining fat during the surplus, that's really all that matters. That's how, you know, you're, you're in a successful surplus. Yeah. So let's talk about the, like, what's a healthy way to do this? Like, so if I'm okay, so I know I need to eat more period. So let's start with that. Right. And I know I'm going to gain a little bit of fat, but I don't want to gain too much fat. Like how much is too much? You just eat cheeseburgers? Or how much is, yeah, that's the thing. Like how much is enough? So can we talk about that? So how much, how much is enough? Like, as it like, muscle mass like gaining muscle mass no right? yeah no i'm or talking about like how many food. yeah how much yeah, the food, quantity of food, food. Yeah, like, yeah. How, much, like, how much is too much how much isn't enough yeah you know, is there a fine line here like is there a specific number what do i need to know yeah okay so uh general surplus you know upwards of three to five hundred extra calories above your maintenance a day um, or a week or what per day gotcha. yeah per day um if you wanted to do something a little bit leaner right you could calculate 10 percent a 10 percent surplus so take 10 percent of your maintenance and add it onto your maintenance it's going to be a slower gain but again it's going to be a little bit leaner of a process um also being aware of how you lay out your proteins your carbs and your fats is really important too uh, i'm going to preface this with fats do not make you fat but when we're in a surplus they're a little bit more easily stored mm-hmm. and proteins and carbs are essential for muscle gain uh, so that's why you want to prioritize those two macronutrients um, i typically recommend you know keeping yourself in like the 25 percent ratio for fats give or take there's nuance. Everybody's different. Like I know that I feel horrible if I'm on 20 to 25% fats. I like to stay near like the 30% range. Um, but yeah, case by case, if you feel fine on 25%, that's typically where I recommend people start. Uh, and then just making sure that you're eating enough protein to be in a surplus, but not so much that you're losing out on the benefits of the carbs because proteins are thermogenic, right? You're going to burn more calories digesting the protein. So you want enough for the surplus, but not so much that your body's wasting energy digesting all that protein. Yeah. I think this is a really important takeaway. Like just, uh, I said at the beginning, like more is better. (laughs) Right. And when you have a ton of muscle mass, when you have a high level of muscle mass, obviously your protein needs and your ability to go into that protein surplus is more to your advantage. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But if you're a person that's already maybe a little over fat, right. Mm -hmm. And, or you're taking you you mentioned three to 500 calories a day in terms of a surplus, uh, to your maintenance, Mm -hmm. uh, 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 an extra hundred calories it that adds up yeah. over, over the course of the week and an extra hundred calories in fat when you're in a position again in a let's call it a bulk or a muscle gaining phase uh and i think that's another topic like how do you what's a bulk and <laughs> how do you do it and all that yeah. kind of stuff we can talk about that later but my point is is if you're bulking and you're already carrying a little extra body fat if you're going over your calories so if you're pushing beyond the three to 500. And again, and there's nuance there. It could be different for everybody. And you're a little over fat and you're over consuming your fats, right? Mm. And or over consuming your protein and or over consuming your carbohydrate. You may have a, t- you may be putting on fat a little bit easier than somebody that was dialing it up to maybe that 25%, knowing mm. that they're staying there and really closely managing that protein number to get that what they need. Yeah. And it's interesting how, the, the carbs kind of just fall into line when I see people do that. Maybe you could speak to that. Like focus on being in maintenance first, if that makes sense, because there is, I mean, depending on the training age, there's some recomp that you could see where you're still gaining mass without while losing some fat mass, or like I said, do that 10% surplus. So you're still seeing that gain in muscle mass, but I mean, there might be that one-to-one range, like, you know, ratio of both muscle and fat that's coming up. So for that person, I mean, honestly, like I would probably recommend if you are already kind of overweight in the fat department, I would start with a deficit 
opposite or start with maintenance and just train at maintenance at your proper macro ratio and kind of see how your body figures things out. See, you know, if you're seeing some recomposition and then kind of go from there first. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you say is don't worry about gaining muscle right away. Let's yeah. worry about finding a even balance right mm -hmm. in our maintenance level and maybe lose a little body fat first and see where our body's comfortable doing that yeah. and what we can do at maintenance first before we go into pushing or stressing the body to gain a bunch more muscle up, up front. Yeah. So this is interesting because I see this happening a lot with coaches, you know, so people come in the door, right? They're over fat, right? They are, they're overweight by every definition of the word, right? And the first thing they get into is this very, very specific and pro periodized strength training program, right? It's very, uh, th there, there might be a lot of volume involved, right? Mm -hmm. They're, they're trying to push up the intensity very, very quickly. And yes, that person might be burning, burning, or excuse me, building muscle, but that's not necessarily creating enough of a deficit in order to create fat loss in that same program. Mm -hmm. When maybe what they could be doing is spending a little bit more time working on the nutrition piece, trying to get them to maintenance calories, still working on that stimulus sure. to help build or encourage muscle mm -hmm. growth, but work on coming up at the end of the day, week, month yeah. in a deficit to lose some body fat, to put them in a better position to one, have a reference point, and, and two, well, now we know how much protein or how much fat uh, we can dial up or dial back here. Yes, exactly. I, you know, typically my very first recommendation is finding that maintenance phase, um, especially if you're just starting to, you know, look into your nutrition. You've never tracked before. You don't really know how much of the proteins, carbs and fats that you should be eating just by putting yourself in maintenance and then your activity increases. OK, great. You know, you could either just like put yourself in a deficit because your activity has increased um, or we see that recomposition, right? So if I'm reverse dieting somebody who's been under eating for a really long time and we focus on maintenance first, there's that recomposition that we could see in the process, again, depending on, on training age. Um, and then even seeing um, a surplus, like, even seeing an increase, even if we're not seeing a decrease in fat mass, there's still an increase in muscle that just comes with you know, taking somebody from under eating for a period of time and bringing them back up to maintenance um, alongside, you know, starting training while they're here. Um, again, there's there's that increase in muscle mass that we see even even without the decrease in fat at first. Right. But again, like you said, it sets them up for a better deficit, a more efficient deficit later. Oh, that's such a key point. And in the what you're you're talking about is getting them to maintenance. And you mentioned the term reverse dieting. And so I think it's important to maybe talk a little bit about that for those that may or may not be familiar with it. For some people, it might be really elementary, but they also might be confused uh, because there's a couple of different diets that, uh, sorry, approaches that we take. It could be a reverse versus a recovery diet, which are mm -hmm. two very different things. There's some similarities, but they're different. We do them for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to break down all of those things today, but more specifically on the recovery diet, if you're not at maintenance, right, and you've been severely under eating for a very, very long time, you mentioned the term recovery, recovery diet. Maybe you can talk a little bit about what that is and how you get there. So I feel like real quick, yeah. we should cover metabolic adaption. Yeah. Well, right. Uh, in, yes. in this, because uh, I feel like it's constantly going to come back to that point, right? A hundred percent every time. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, to your point, Jeff, I mean, with metabolic adaption, essentially what you've done, we've talked about this on other podcasts, you and I actually, with regard to what you've done essentially is, is you've helped, you've, you've created a, a, a place whereby your body is able to function and get through the day and do the exercises and, and meet the demands of whatever that you're putting on it below that maintenance phase. So essentially, and in effect, it's down regulated all the things it's supposed to be doing or yeah. could be doing, let's just say in order to meet the demands that you're placing on it in an underfed state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not even gonna talk about the recovery piece yeah. and how that impacts uh, metabolic adaptation. And metabolic adaptation is a good thing. Yeah, it happens like, both ways. We want that to happen, yeah, exactly, exactly. In, in, yeah. in the reverse diet perspective. So to your point, the metabolic adaptation is your body will always adjust to whatever it is that you're giving it. Yes. And we're not trying to trick it or fool it, but we're trying to train it yes. yep. to be ready for that adaptation and respond appropriately. So in the, in the event that we need to reverse diet, somebody is jumping into the reverse diet. I think mm -hmm. you're, you're spot on there, uh, Jeff. We need to figure out like, what does that look like coming back up the other side? If we've, we've reached a level of metabolic adaptation where we are 
under eating. We're underfed mm-hmm. for our daily needs. And now we're yeah. even underfed most for this are my there. mass gaining. Yeah. Need. Most people are there. So yeah. anybody listening, this is probably you. <laughs> I just, it is. Yeah, we yeah. see it all the time. Most yeah. people don't eat enough. Yeah. yeah. And what throughout the week, but what they do on the weekends is oh, they yeah. double what they're supposed to be eating and Kyoto Palace and all that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Half the time I am telling people to eat more and rest more. Right. So, yeah, you're right. That is kind of how a lot of people come into it. And another way that I like to explain it is, you know, um, if our bodies truly went by the numbers and like, let's say you were under eating for months, Mm -hmm. you would waste away like within like two or three months. Right. And so it's kind of the defense mechanism so that we don't waste away. Right. The metabolism down regulates so that we can still function properly, like you said, you know, at the food that you are giving it on those days. Um, so a reverse diet is, uh, just a way of upregulating your metabolism without kind of putting it into overdrive. Cause you know, let's say somebody has been under eating by like 800 calories. I'm not going to tell them to start eating 800 calories up tomorrow, right? Like I'm going to kind of ease them up week by week. Um, and you know, this is another reason why we take body composition scans during the one-on-one coaching, um, uh, so that we can make sure that we're seeing, um, you know, some good numbers. We're not seeing too much, um, fat, you know, gain throughout the process. Uh, you can take it as slow or as quickly as you want. But I mean, again, that still comes with like, you know, just keep your, your fat and your muscle in check. Um, again, there's a lot of recomposition that we see, uh, especially the slower that you take it. Uh, and the more that you focus on your proteins being in place. Um, and then also just being active throughout it is really important too. What do you mean active? So just, I mean, working out. So making sure like for the average person, honestly, two to three days of strength training is good. Maybe, you know, a day or two for conditioning and then going for walks every day, which is like one of the most underrated exercises that like, I'm always like telling people go for a 30 minute walk, get 10 to 12 K steps per day. You know, I try to, I try to set some numbers, you know, again, nuanced, everyone's an individual. Um, but I try to set like these generic, uh, numbers for people just to get them outside and just to get them walking and getting those steps in because it's that, uh, non-exercise activity that makes the biggest difference, especially when reverse dieting and you don't want to gain too much fat on the reverse diet be like, make sure you're walking right. nobody, all the time. <laughs> nobody wants to go over fat when they're trying to, you know, well, why would you be bulking anyway? It's generally because you want to look, there's, there's an aesthetic goal or there's yeah. a performance goal that you're trying to meet. Having too much body fat at the, in the end of this is not going to benefit either of those things, right? Yes. <laughs> so a couple of key takeaways that I'm, I'm taking away from this. One is, uh, first off, understand metabolic adaptation, right? It yeah. suggests mm-hmm. and, and just really understand where your metabolism is like in the moment, which is the more which, important piece. And it changes, right? So you have mm-hmm. to understand the next thing is, is, uh, you need to understand that you're going to need to eat in a surplus based on your maintenance mm-hmm. calories, right? So you need to find that maintenance number. You need to know what that is. And that's going to be different for everybody based on your history, what you've been doing, where you currently are, health, exercise, what your programming looks like. So yeah. mm-hmm. you can't guess and expect not to, you know, gain fat. Right. right? But it is, yeah. but that said to, and to Taylor's point, cause you're right. You can't, you can't guess. There is some uh, like a little bit of an experimentation process that goes, it's like we're, yeah. we're our own experiment, a human experiment, right? Mm-hmm. Th- th- if there isn't a one size fits all, we tell people, people this all the time. Like if, if, if just handing somebody a template or a formula was the answer, we, be, yeah. it, <laughs> everybody would be getting the results that they want every day. Yeah, I that's wouldn't where have the a coaching, job. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, coaching comes it in. just, it just doesn't. And, and b- by the way, to boil it all down to that or try to mi- simplify it to that is insulting to me because the body is so dynamic, right? There's yeah. so many things. So understanding your, your, your current maintenance or where your current maintenance level is and what you need to do from there. Mm -hmm. So I got the, if you are at maintenance, let's start with maybe three to 500 calories above maintenance on a daily basis Mm -hmm. for some period of time and doing some check-ins to make sure that we are not getting Mm -hmm. too much body fat. Like Mm -hmm. you mentioned, maybe a healthy range would be up to about one to one. For example, a pound of muscle for a pound of fat yeah. to a certain extent. But yeah. if we start to see you that. Tell me can, who's building a pound of muscle. I want to come get. Right, right. Right. <laughs> but if you're doing that, let's say you're building a pound of muscle over a matter of a couple of weeks and mm-hmm. you're also putting on a pound of body fat. Yeah. To me, that's very that's acceptable. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. If we go eight, 10, 12 weeks down the line and we're still gaining that body fat at the rate we're gaining muscle, 
then we might need to look at uh, a little bit different formula in terms of maybe our macros or our activity mm-hmm. level. We might mm-hmm. need to make some adjustments. Taylor, what do you say about that? Well, there's also there's also calorie cycling that you could do as well. Um, and like the timing of this, you know, just depends on whether you're a hard gainer, easy gainer, all that good stuff. But basically spending a set period of time. So, for example, maybe six to eight weeks in the surplus and then spend a week or two either at maintenance or at a, a deficit. deficit. Yeah. yeah. And that kind of I mean, not only does it give you, you know, just kind of like a mental break, because, you know, for some people eating that much is like a lot. And so it kind of gives your digestive system a break. Um, there's some really good things that happen to your insulin during that period of time as well. Um, But then it also, I mean, again, it puts you, your, your metabolism is going to upregulate a little bit with the surplus. So putting yourself in maintenance or a deficit for about a week is going to help with just a little bit of fat loss, like a week or two of focusing on fat loss and then getting right back into the muscle gain. Phase. Yeah. I like what you said there about the diet break there too. I think you mm-hmm. said that the diet break where like, man, yeah. you're, you're, you may feel like you're constantly shoveling food and you really have to work to get it down. And again, going back to most people don't eat enough. Yeah. That's what we hear a lot. It's like, oh my God, it's so much food. Not having to worry about that or, you know, thinking about it differently. Like I don't have to eat all of this today. You know, I just need to meet my, this number and Mm -hmm. I need to get this, this, this macro profile in whatever can be very helpful for somebody psychologically on the flip side of the physiological benefits that you're getting from, again, coming in in that surplus metabolism's up, up regulated, thermogenesis is upregulated a little bit. You take those calories away, it has to work. Ideally, mm-hmm. what you're hoping that it does is yeah. it moves into working on that stored body fat as fuel for fuel. And then yeah. coming out of that and back into maintenance or maybe even further in your surplus, depending on what makes sense for you. But the only way to know that, and I'll, I'll ref- I've, I use this term a lot, like that's a little bit more of an advanced technique. It could be used with somebody coming out of the gate if they have a high level of awareness um, and they have a high level of consistency with their dietary intake, their exercise. Things are a little bit more controlled or standardized in their in their lifestyle. But I would I would equate that to, to be like that's more of a blue belt to black belt type of uh, uh, of approach. If you're a white belt in this and this is less like you're just coming into this. Now, let's just get you to maintenance for a while first. Then we can go with the three to 500 and we're journaling, we're taking notes, we're doing some, maybe some measurements along the way to understand how this impacts us. Then we can maybe implement like what you said with calorie cycling. And you, I think you did a really good job of articulating that. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, imagine like if you're in a surplus and you're eating high quality food, like that stuff is filling, like very, very filling. You know, if you've got a lot of like processed condensed foods that you're eating, it's a little bit easier to put yourself in a surplus, right? Um, High density. Yeah. Yeah. But overall, if you're eating high quality food, you're getting the fiber that you need to be getting. It's going to be super filling and it's just going to be, you know, again, it's a mental break on top of like a break for your body to take. Yeah. It also takes time, you know, to build up that enzymatic process in the stomach and get used to eating that much food, right? Man, such a, (laughs) such an important thing. I mean, again, you talked about if somebody's 800, 800 calories under me, Maintenance, you're not going to give them 800 calories. They're going to blow up. I mean, mm-hmm. everything about mm-hmm. that's going to be miserable. It's yeah. we've got depending to depending on what they try to eat too. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's it's building it back in through that recovery dieting, yeah. or excuse me, the reverse dieting process that you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. We also haven't pinpointed exactly how many calories it takes to gain a pound of muscle, which is, I think is kind of crazy. Fun fact, you know, we know. Oh, you mean like, we just not here at the table? Oh, no, no, no. Like, like in, general, like, in general. In Jesus, general. what am I missing? Did we figure this out? Yeah. And I, I've, been, missed I've been it? over here doing math. I've been out of the loop. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, no, no. share the wealth. It's yeah. like, oh my gosh, I want to say like they've estimated it's like around like 200 and something calories, like, you know, per Per pound of, I don't remember what the estimation was, but we haven't pinpointed that as a society, as right. as a people, as, as a mankind. Science. Get it together, as mankind, guys. Right. We have not. Get it together. We haven't pinpointed that, right. and so then you know that's kind of another like reason why like the math is like okay, look, we can either do just this general surplus of the three to five hundred, or we can you know really narrow it down to just a ten percent surplus and like you know just kind of see how long it takes for that muscle to start packing on. Yeah, I think that's really good guidelines. You know, yeah. keep it simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's not overcomplicate this process, but let's have a high level of awareness of where we are with regard to our, you know, kind of how our metabolism is is functioning at this point, what our maintenance calorie levels need to be. We need to be on this path for a while and have good level of consistency in order to make those adjustments or have your coach help you make the more precise adjustments to get you the more immediate response or the more favorable response that you want, maybe in the shortest period of time. But there's no mm-hmm. promises there because Mm-mm. everybody's different. 
Yep. And that's why you have to experiment. You have to, you know, uh, some people will weigh themselves every day and take the average of their weight at the end of the week. Um, but, you know, tracking everything, knowing how much you're eating every single day, taking body composition scans once a month mm -hmm. is a really, really great way to make sure like, OK, we know what is and isn't working. This is what I'm doing and this is what's happening. And that's how we figure out what we need to do for you. Right. Because if you're not putting the numbers down, I can't help you. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's, or you can't even help yourself either in that way. There's no way for you to figure out, okay, this is what works for me in a surplus. Um, Cause I could give two people the same plan and one person could gain more muscle and the other person could just be gaining a ton of fat. You know? I've been logging for like eight years. So, you know, no way. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the important part is you got to know you. Yes. 